Well, let me tell you something, brother! Snort, 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 tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip, yo. I received a $25 tip from One Minute Man. And he he's talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Let's see what he has to say, but let's get him on the leaderboard first. Let's also play his animation. So of course this Baldur's Gate 3 video has to start off with the One Minute Man $25 tip. Because apparently One Minute Man is the biggest Baldur's Gate 3 super fan that DSP has in his audience. It seems like just about every single day when One Minute Man does his $25 tip, he is talking about Baldur's Gate 3. He is hand-holding DSP in some aspect. And it seems like most of the time DSP has no idea what he's talking about and isn't actually listening to what One Minute Man has to say. He's not taking his advice at all. He just says, oh, One Minute Man, I don't know what you're talking about. We're not there yet thanks for the $25 which seems a little dismissive beings that one minute man gives you $25 of support each and every day and has for a very long time also I was curious as to how long it actually takes DSP to put somebody on the leaderboard manually and manually play the animation in this case it was 34 seconds so DSP spent 34 seconds updating the leaderboard for one person and he wonders why he seems to never get anything done in these games why he's always falling behind why it takes him so long to actually complete a playthrough Cool. Okay. He says, it may surprise you that I mentioned this. I've noticed that in Baldur's Gate 3 Combat, you always complain, rightfully so, over team's limited movement, uh, limited range of movement. One of the reasons is that you neglected the athlete ability. You're doing fine with spells, persuasion, charisma, sleight of hand, but agility not so much. That's the corner you have painted yourself into. It's not the game. No, it's the game. Because... The game made the system like that, not me. I didn't code the game, right? So it's pretty much exactly what I said. It's one minute man trying to handhold DSP and DSP is not listening to what he's saying. But it's actually more regarded because DSP is outright blaming the game for his shortcomings when it comes to his gameplay. I mean, what sort of dented ass logic is this? It's not my fault that I didn't invest into a stat because the game is designed that way to allow me to not invest into a stat. Follow me for a second here. It's like if you went into a sandwich shop, right? And when they ask you what you want on your sandwich, you only tell them meats. The only thing that you want on the sandwich is meat no vegetables no sauces just meat and then you go sit down at your table and you start to eat your food and you're like damn this sandwich just tastes like meat i don't taste anything else and somebody politely comes up next to you and goes well you did order the meat sandwich you didn't get any vegetables so that's kind of on you and in turn you say that it's the shop's fault for allowing you to build your own sandwich it's the shop's fault for not making you get vegetables that you didn't want at the time that just doesn't make any sense you are given the choice as to what you allocate your stats into how are you really going to sit here and blame the game because you designed your character poorly because you weren't investing into one of the mechanics that the game has in it yeah well i'll i'll compare this to i'll give you a perfect comparison okay dark souls 1 dark souls 2 dark souls 3 out of those three games one of the three is universally panned because of a certain system that everyone hates the other two don't have the problem okay does anyone know what I'm talking about? In the original Dark Souls trilogy, one of the games is universally criticized for having a bad mechanic that everyone hates. And it's very frustrating. And it was removed for Dark Souls 3. It wasn't in Dark Souls 1. It was added to Dark Souls 2. And then it was removed for Dark Souls 3. Thank you very much. SAS just figured it out. ADP. Now, what does that mean? Is it adaptability or something like that? What it stands for? Um... There is a mechanic in Dark Souls 2 that's a stat that you have to upgrade in order to roll. <laughs> to roll. The critical thing you need to do to survive in any action game, a dodge. You actually have to waste time leveling up that stat to just dodge. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, right? It's dumb as shit. And it shouldn't be in there. In Dark Souls 1, you can roll. 
In Dark Souls 3, you can roll. In Sekiro, you can dodge. In Bloodborne, you can dodge. The only game you can't do it unless you waste time leveling it is Dark Souls 2. Okay? Real quick, got to give a shout out to Super Slate and DSP's chat here. Imagine if Dark Souls was a sandwich shop. Sorry, killer, but I beat you to it already. We already did the sandwich shop. But I don't know that ADP is the thing that people took the most issue with in Dark Souls 2. It's definitely a mechanic that isn't explained well and misunderstood by a lot of people when they first go to play Dark Souls 2. But that's not the thing that I hear brought up when people complain about Dark Souls 2. Usually it's the lack of poise, the enemy placements, that a lot of the bosses are gimmicky and uninspired. That the locations don't link together in a way that makes any sort of sense. These are the complaints that I commonly hear about Dark Souls 2. Now, I don't agree with all of them or maybe even any of them. I guess you'll never know. But the adaptability stat is not something that I typically hear about. And to make it very clear, adaptability does not give you the ability to roll. What it does is extend how many iframes your roll has. So it's not that you're incapable of rolling before you upgrade your adaptability to a certain level, and it's not even like it extends the range in which you roll. Instead, it is just about the iframe. Frames. And that definitely can make a difference in your gameplay if you're going for a build that requires you to dodge all of the time. But I want to remind you that that is not a requirement to beating the game. You do not have to dodge once ever. If you wanted to go completely sword and board, you absolutely could. But it's not really that far-fetched that you would have to upgrade your ability to dodge. Action games do that all of the time. Typically, those games have things like perk trees or some sort of upgrade system with equipment. And when you make those upgrades, you get things like a double dodge or a dodge extension of some sort. And that is very similar to upgrading your adaptability in Dark Souls 2. Like I said, it's not a range extension, but it does give you more iframes, which means that your rolls are just better for longer. But how exactly is this a one-to-one -one comparison with Baldur's Gate 3? I honestly forgot how we even got here. Now, I definitely understand that a lot of people are going to say, well, this isn't a fair comparison. Well, in my mind, it is. In Baldur's Gate 3, everyone moves like a slug. Unless, for example, like Karlak, for some reason, has this amazing ability to go insanely long with movement every single turn. And that makes her one of the best, you know, melee fighters. Um, there's ways around it. Like, for example, Asterion is great at range, so you don't need the, 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 uh, the movement. He can basically just get to a range of any enemy and just snipe the crap out of them, right? The idea with a sorcerer is that they should have great range with their spells, and therefore that doesn't matter, okay? But the problem here is... You're a bunch of adventurers. You're all out there surviving against un insurmountable odds. You're all supposed to be badasses. But you can't walk more than two feet? <laughs> On what fucking universe? Oh, the D&D &D universe. Well, then the D&D &D universe is outdated and annoying. So DSP really just misunderstands what his character is actually supposed to be because you're not supposed to be a bunch of badass adventurers. I mean, you definitely can be. If that's the characters that you make, that's the characters you build, and that's how you play them great. Your characters are a bunch of adventurous badasses. But you can absolutely build an absolute dolt who doesn't do anything correctly and just kind of sucks in about every facet. And that's entirely up to you and whether or not you take advantage of the mechanics that the game gives you. That's up to you whether or not you build your character in a way that synergizes with your other party members and utilizes the skills that they have. And I mean, he already kind of debunked himself because he said that these other characters have ways around this limitation. Karlak has an ability to double her movement speed. Astarian has range, so he doesn't actually have to move all that often. It sounds to me like you either need to utilize these systems on other characters or you need to build these characters that require that much movement to be able to do that much movement. I just can't believe that he outright addressed some of the ways that you can interact and get around this mechanic that he deems annoying, but can't seem to realize that he needs to take it one step further and do that for the other character that he's having an issue with. And you can see in his chat right now, there are people telling him exactly how he can utilize the mechanics to get around the movement thing. 90s guy is saying that you should cast Longstrider. And for those of you that don't know, Longstrider is just a cantrip that every character has, I believe, that just extends your movement range. It does require an action point, meaning that you probably won't be able to attack on that turn but if you're not in range to actually attack with a melee weapon anyway it doesn't matter if you can't attack because you need to get to the character first apostate can't is saying that you never use jump to extend your movement another mechanic that dsp is just outright not using that he could 90s guy again telling him or use classes that have good movement like monk so this guy is outright telling dsp that he could utilize other classes and builds to get around the movement problems that he's having there's so many ways to interact and deal with this mechanic and dsp is just refusing 
wanting to do any of them and instead complain and say that the game is old and outdated and stupid simply because he doesn't know the mechanics and refuses to learn them because we're trying to play a video game this is not real life where you get exhausted if you walk down the street because you're not physically fit this is a video game fantasy your character should actually have some level of like fucking wind so they can walk longer than fucking three meters before they stub their toe and fall over right and this is just that stupid argument that people had in call of duty all of the time why can't my character run for longer than three seconds he's supposed to be a hyper trained military soldier and he gets winded after five steps yes because it's a fictional gameplay mechanic it was designed to make you think about what your character is doing and how you're going to implement your limitations to get the win it was put in there for balance so you weren't constantly sprinting full speed across all of the maps completely breaking the flow of the game but as far as baldur's gate 3 is concerned it actually makes more sense for the combat that's in the game because it is turn-based. So each individual turn kind of has to be smaller movements because it would look absolutely ridiculous if you crossed the entire battlefield and got a hit in before anybody else could react. Because if this were reality like DSP is wanting it to be, all of the enemies would already have been moved out of the way and fired upon him before he ever crossed the battlefield. He had a similar problem at the beginning of the game. He's like, oh, my character's right in front of you. Why do I only have a 35% percent chance to hit because that's what your stats dictate dsp and in a turn-based game a lot of the actual actions a lot of the finer details are pretty much left to the imagination so while on the board you might be right next to this enemy the reality of the situation if it were played like a real game would be would be that they dodged or they parried you and you actually didn't hit at all because it is a turn-based game it is left to the imagination and you just kind of have to come to a conclusion about why it happened like that as far as your story is concerned but of course that would require require a modicum of imagination on DSP's end and any sort of understanding about the mechanics of the game, which he has neither of. That's the whole point. It's fantasy, not reality. But they're going for this hyper statistic based game where it's like, you, I should be focusing, I'm a sorcerer, what should I be focusing on? My spell casting abilities, buffing those abilities, getting better spells, better levels on the spells, things to buff the spells. I shouldn't be worrying about Oh, my guy's a, a sissy ninny who can't walk four feet. Now I have to put a bunch of points into my fucking, my, my athletic skill. You're a sorcerer. You shouldn't have to be athletic. You should literally hover above and fly anywhere you fucking want because you're a sorcerer, right? I mean, if you have the ability to hover and fly around like a sorcerer wherever you want, but if you don't have that ability, then you do need to focus on your athletics. You do need to focus on being able to move. Just like in real life, if you're at the library making big brain gains, being the most intellectual style individual on the planet, but never spend a single second in the gym, you're going to be a noodle boy. You're not going to be able to lift any of the chairs when your teacher says that they need a big strong boy to help move some chairs around in class. That's just the reality of the situation. This is the realism that dsp is looking for and actively getting upset when it's there you're a fucking melee fighter you're the, supposed to be the best tanking fighter in the game like lazel but she can't go too far she's exhausted she's carrying a sword that's bigger than her fucking body right she can attack 17 times in a row and behead multiple people in a turn but she can't walk more than three meters it's too tough too hard for her above her pay grade <laughs> It doesn't make any sense because the game's based on these confining statistics that make it less fun. Well, DSP, you did just say that her sword was super heavy, so I could understand why she'd be able to maybe swing it in place, but not be moving all over the map with it. But need I remind you that DSP is the one that's in charge of these statistics that the game is going by. He's the person in charge of making these builds and allocating the points. If he doesn't meet the requirements that he thinks that he should be meeting, if he isn't able to do the things that he wants to do because of where his points are allocated, that falls on nobody but him. That's entirely his doing. The game isn't making these characters for him in fact it actively encourages you to rebuild them whenever you want if you like a universe where everything is confined by statistics okay this is definitely the game for you but at some point as gamers we have to realize that actually the confines of this makes it not as fun right this would seriously be way more fun if it would be a little bit less strict and a little bit more loose and a little bit more hey let's just enjoy it 
rather than, uh oh, it's a fight, new enemy type. Here's the new stat that you have to now learn. And they have this new ability that you didn't know about. And now half your things don't work in this fight. And by the way, your limited movement, oh, you can't see. Oh, by the way, the, the earth is rotating slightly more, more fast today. So because of that, all of your, your ranged abilities curve to the left. So be sure to calculate the wind velocity so that everything will hit properly. And by the way, just so you know, Carlac ate a bad bean burrito for breakfast, so she's going to be shitting half the time, and she misses half her turns. Okay, go. Fight. What? That's, that's Baldur's Gate 3, man. Of course, we had to fit in a scat joke somewhere in this segment. Wouldn't be a DSP segment without one, would it? But as far as all of these factors that come into play during a combat scenario, things like you not being able to see because they cast a spell or damaging your stats because they did something to you, saving throws and all of that. Ideally, if Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't a turn-based game and was instead an action game, all of these things would still be included. All of these things would still be factors when it comes to the combat. They'd all just have to be animated and implemented in a different way. I don't think that having all of these factors and effects in the game is necessarily a negative. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. Baldur's Gate 3 just has the benefit of being a turn-based game, so all of these mechanics can be implemented because they don't exactly have to show a whole lot. They don't have to take into consideration the player's direct control over a character. Whereas if this were a third-person action game where you had direct control over the character and camera, it would probably be much more difficult for you to implement all of these status effects and factors. I don't know. Again, for some people, People are, oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. For me, it's like, I'll tolerate it, but I'm going to criticize it. And I have a right to criticize it and say I don't like that, right? No, I'm, I'm 87 hours into this game. My character should walk further than three steps. I don't care if you're the most decrepit idiot. You're an adventurer at this point. You should have figured something out. Now I had to waste time sinking points into a stat that's meaningless just to walk a little further. Just like in Dark Souls 2. No one should have to waste statistic points, leveling points, to roll. It's a fucking action game. If you can't roll, you might as well not play it. But that's how they built it and everyone hates it. DSP once again speaking for everybody, I actually know quite a few people who enjoyed Dark Souls 2 over all of the other Souls games. So let's not sit here and act like DSP's opinion is the end all be all to what a good game is and isn't. And this just once again goes into DSP not understanding the mechanics of the game while simultaneously having no imagination. Because if you aren't allocating points into these stats, if you aren't working on these skills in the game as far as the statistics and menus are concerned, your character is not doing these things. They aren't getting better at them. So while visually on screen your character might be running around everywhere and looking like a total chad if you're not working on those stats they might as well be a decrepit old man who has to use a walker to get around because your athletics is zero and that's about how your movement would be i can't imagine what his reaction would be if he actually had to upgrade his athletics to move it faster than a snail's pace in non-combat scenarios if his character could only walk because his stats were so low that a jog was impossible for him we absolutely would have been heard about that by now but if that were the case i think that he would have remedied the problem by now because that's something that actually impedes how quickly he can get through the game where right now with the movement situation and combat scenarios he can just keep bashing his head into the wall and brute forcing it until he gets through the game right it's the same thing here man but again for some reason people who are totally into the whole simming art role playing i guess you're just so used to it right i'm sure it's the same in real dnd all right and I, to me that's like that would drive me nuts no wonder you got D&D games that have been running for 20 years. It probably took them five years to be able to walk down the street. <laughs> like, holy shit, man. <clears throat> Whenever I do one of these BG3 videos, I get a lot of comments by people telling me that DSP would just be an awful person to actually play a tabletop game with. And they've given me a hundred reasons as to why, and I could absolutely see it. He just refuses to get with the program. He refuses to understand the mechanics and work with the mechanics to have an enjoyable time. He insists that he is always right and the game should do whatever he wants because he wants to have fun, when that's just not how these things work. Every single game has mechanics that limit you in some capacity, and DSP always manages to find a way to complain about it. Now just imagine him doing these complaints in real life at a table with other people who are actually trying to have a good time. I just think there's a reason that he doesn't have any friends and doesn't leave his house but once a week. It's because he's absolutely insufferable and even he has to be aware of it at this point. At least that would be my thought if he had any sort of self-awareness, but he doesn't. He's just a coward. That's why he doesn't leave his house. 
All right. Anyway, I appreciate your input, uh, One Minute Man. And again, if people have recommendations on how to improve my party, I'm all ears. Every time I level up, I ask the stream, what should I do? Literally, no one has said, oh, put some, some points into your athletics so you can walk further. No one said that. Everyone's like, put it into your stat, man. Put it into your main stat. Get your main stat to level 20. Oh, no, here's a really cool ability that emphasizes the strengths of this class. Use that, right? Dual class your Asterion to be a ranger and this and, and rogue and then do this. And, no one said, oh, put some points into movement. No one said that at all. So... So this is chat's fault, obviously. They didn't build his characters correctly. Come on. How was he supposed to know that this was a problem that he was experiencing in his gameplay that he was specifically having a problem with? I mean, just think about how stupid that is. PSP was actually having a problem in a video game and he has the solution to it, but because people didn't specifically tell him to do it, he didn't bother. It's like playing Call of Duty and you think that your weapon doesn't have enough ammo in the magazine, but instead of putting the extended mag attachment on, you just continue to run it as is because no one told you to. If you have a problem in a game, you should be utilizing all of the mechanics at your disposal to rectify that situation. How does this guy get through every day like this? Again, you guys know more than me. Everyone is yelling in the chat, Long Strider, okay? I don't even know what that means. But okay, Long Strider, if you say so. Well, maybe we'll look into that. Keep in mind, sadly, I just hit level 9, so we're probably not hitting level 10 for a while. So there you go. <clears throat> Long Strider is a ritual spell that will fix the problem. <laughs> Damn, I got debunked. It was a spell. It wasn't a cantrip the whole time. I was talking about that other cantrip that affects your movement. But I'm not going to go back and re-record it because if I was wrong, I was wrong. They're telling him to use the spell. I was talking about the cantrip. That just means there's two different ways to rectify the situation. No, wait, are you saying that Long Strider is a spell that lets people walk further? Let me get this straight. In order to walk, you need to use a magic spell. <laughs> all right. We're all right, everyone. We got our posse, our, our, our crack team of adventurers together. We've got the rogue who's going to pick every lock and snipe everyone from a distance from the shadows. We've got the unstoppable warrior who will chop everyone's heads off and get 10 turns in a row. We've got the ultra powerful sorcerer who will cast rains of magic and just des destroy everyone. And we've got, I don't know, the, the, the healer, right? The, the, the cleric who will, you know, use holy magic. By the way, so let's start going. Oh, hold on. Our legs are frozen. Oh, that's right. Let me get... Legs move! Alakazabra! Oh, okay, now we can walk, everyone. Let's go. And again, this is just DSP failing to use his imagination. The spell is called Long Strider. It doubles the movement distance for a character for a turn. Given the name Long Strider, you could imagine that there's some sort of force that goes beneath your feet or something and helps you glide forward in less amount of steps than it would take you to walk. And that's why you can clear double the distance. Because your character has to move their legs half as much. He just takes all of the fun out of everything because he wants to. He wants to be miserable. He wants to hate the game. And I just don't understand why that's appealing to him why he wants to make his audience more miserable in a game that they actually enjoy to me that just doesn't sound like a good business move he's always talking about how this is his business and he needs to make this content and make people happy so that he can continue to pay his bills but then he makes every single instance in which people are having a good time as insufferable as he possibly can i just failed to see the benefit of that <laughs> what the fuck man do you not see how silly this is do you not see how silly this shit is? The confines of this style of game. We can we are we're the most badass team of adventures you've ever seen, but we have to magically cast a spell on our legs to get them to work. Like what the fuck? Are you all Professor X? <laughs> the team of Professor X's. They're all stuck. They did <laughs> DSP might be careful. He's kind of playing with fire here, beings that Jade, one of his regulars in chat, is a chaired up individual. Just seems a little insensitive for a guy who knows that some of his audience is in a Professor X style situation. But I guess that's none of my business. They're not my audience. I don't care about them. Unlike you, obviously. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no.
Anyway. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, I received a $2 tip here. Hold on. From Kirk. Sorry for a stupid question. I'm going to go opposite George until everyone stops copying me. I don't know what that means either. Thanks for the $2 tip, Kirk. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> glad we got an appearance from KK Kirk. Always glad to have him around so that we can be reminded that DSP lets an actual racist hang out in his chat. Very cool, very cool. No idea how DSP hasn't taken the obvious win of just getting this guy banned gone forever. But as always, it's not my content. I can't tell DSP what to do. He's going to portray himself however he wants to portray himself. And right now he's portraying himself as someone who will ally with an actual racist if it means that he gets a little bit of money. Uh. All right. Oh my god. Uh. My mind has been addled. The mind flare has addled my brain this morning. Right? Agent Coop, it's not that I don't like the game. Listen, Baldur's Gate 3 has a great narrative. Okay? I like the narrative. I do like how each character is seeming to, to have their own story that's getting fleshed out. It's a little annoying that they're almost all the same story. Like, Asterion is someone's slave. Uh, Shadowheart was inadvertently someone's slave. Uh, Gale is someone's slave. Uh, Karlak was working for a demon and was their slave. Now she's not their slave anymore, but now she might die because of the thing that was put into her chest when she was a slave. Uh... Will, literally the slave of a demon. I mean, every single fucking character has almost the same story, right? But at the same time, the lore of the universe is very interesting, right? To see all these different things that have come together. And again, I don't even know if these are D&D &D or if this is like just for the Baldur's Gate franchise, but I like that, okay? And listen, when the, the combat is streamlined and works and I'm feeling the flow of combat and I feel comfortable, I like it a lot. The problem is a lot of the time that doesn't happen because, they're again, they're always trying to throw you a curveball. And at some point, I don't think they realize that a lot of gamers don't want curveballs constantly. They just want to feel, uh, I got in my groove of the game, let's, let's enjoy it, right? But the thing is, a lot of people don't understand that Earth and life on Earth is not black and white. It's not, this is the best game ever or this is the worst game ever. There's a between. Very ironic coming from DSP. The guy who right now is failing to see that a lot of the mechanics that he's complaining about are the reason that the game is good and that while there are some pitfalls here and there where he is annoyed at the game, that a lot of them are also responsible for all of the parts that he likes. And I can't stand when he thinks that he's speaking for all of these people. He thinks that he's the average gamer and he understands why people do and don't like video games. Going as far as to say that people don't like being constantly thrown curveballs and just want to get into a groove and play a game this same exact way. When that's absolutely not the case, people actually appreciate that Baldur's Gate 3 tried to keep the combat at least somewhat interesting for the majority of the game. A lot of those things that he's calling curveballs are just mechanics being utilized in a different way to try and make each combat encounter something different, something to keep you on your toes. That way you're not getting too comfortable. Because if you're getting too comfortable, you start to feel less engaged. You start to interact with the game less and less because you're not required to engage with all of the mechanics. If this were a different game and you use the same overpowered weapon for the entire game, you wouldn't have to engage with all of the mechanics. Things like resource management, timing your shots, understanding the range of each weapon. These are mechanics that are integral to the game that you won't be interacting with at all if you just do the same thing over and over again. And that's what DSP wants. He doesn't want to learn how to use a variety of spells in the game that add or remove effects in the game. He doesn't want to think about how to synergize spells so that they actively stack on top of each other for more damage. He just wants to be able to play the game, level his character up, and cast the same lightning bolt spell all the way until the end where he wins. And that's just kind of sad and defeats the whole entire purpose of playing the game to begin with, if you ask me. There's many things about Baldur's Gate 3 I'm really enjoying. There's quite a few that annoy me. So for me, it ends up a balance. I'll tell you, yes, the balance tips a lot more towards the positive. Like, I do like the game more often than I dislike it. But when I dislike it, it drives me nuts. It's like really annoying shit that gets to me. And I have the right to be vocal about that because I'm someone who's an outsider to that franchise. I'm someone who has never played a style of game like this before. Arguably, you can say, well, what about <clears throat> Divinity 2? You're right. But then again, this is definitely more advanced than Divinity 2. Man, the story is crazy but different. Um, 
So basically, you have to understand, this is my opportunity to voice my honest thoughts about the game as I've been learning about it since December. Remember, this has been two months that I've been playing this game pretty much nonstop and trying to learn and trying to absorb lore and trying to become a part of that universe so that I can like the game as much as you guys have and try to understand why people would say why it was game of the year. I really forgot that he's been playing this game multiple times a week for two months straight and still fails to realize pretty much any of the game's basic mechanics. That's just astounding to me. It's just amazing. I can't imagine playing a game for that long and just not understanding the mechanics. I don't know how he does it. My brain wouldn't let me do that. There's no way I could make it that far without learning something. But like always, DSP manages to find a way. I get it, but at the same time, I don't agree. I do feel the game has enough shortcomings. I probably would not have named this my game of the year last year, regardless of the fact that so many others did. I do think I got more enjoyment out of other games. Still a great game, still having a great time with it. Uh, I can't wait to see where the plot goes. Man, let me tell you something. If you want to see me destroy a game, if we fucking get like 150 hours in and we beat it and the ending sucks, I'm going to lose my shit. All right? Because to invest that much time into a game and have the ending be terrible... I'm going to flip my lid. And I don't want to flip my lid. I'm hoping they actually have a good ending to the game. There's too many games these days that you invest too much time and the ending is terrible. So I certainly hope the ending of this game is good. After all this investment and all this <laughs> this effort put into it, I really hope that the ending is good. Okay? So I'd be happy. It, you know, if it, if it feels like the journey was, was really the work and then the reward comes at the end, I hate this. Oh, the journey was the reward. Go fuck yourself. No, the journey was not the reward. I suffered through hardship, challenge, and and you know great uh, disparity and 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 um, you know opposition to get through that and get to an ending. Not oh, the game was your ending. No, it wasn't. Fuck you. Write an ending. So I hope that this game has an ending. Okay. <laughs> okay and by the way i've had enough goodbye to me that just screams that dsp isn't having fun playing the game that he's not actually enjoying himself while he's playing and that's the whole point of playing a game if you ask me if you're not having fun playing a game then you have no business playing the game because even if the ending is terrible i don't know i haven't beaten it yet i probably never will in all honesty but even if the ending is terrible did you not have fun along the way did you not meet a bunch of characters that you liked interacting with did you not hear a bunch of smaller stories that you liked to experience did you not enjoy all of the fun combat mechanics that you experienced as well? Of course, the answer for DSP is no, but for everybody else, I would imagine the answer would have to be yes, or you wouldn't make it 150 hours into the game. So while it would be a letdown if the ending of the game was piss poor, I really don't think it's the end of the world. Like I said before, I really think that the stories to games is one of the least important aspects. That might be a hot take. I know some of the people in the comments were disagreeing with me on that, and that's totally fine. If story's important to you, it's important to you. But to me, it's all about the gameplay. But I'm going to have to agree with DSP peace final sentiment because i've had enough goodbye because that's going to be it for today's video of course shout out to snort hogan for the clip in this one as always i appreciate it brother thank you shout out to everybody who watched the video especially if you made it this far a special big ups to all of my members i really appreciate all of you so much thank you thank you hopefully i'll catch all of you guys in the next video but until then make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that snortex ah!